So just take a deep breath and let me know when you're ready to go into it and I'm gonna lead you. Yeah, yeah, you can lead me if you want to. Okay. So in this moment, I release you of all roles you are currently playing, all roles you have ever played and all roles you will ever play. With your own free will, do you choose to take on the part of you that is in resistance to playing with no one? I feel like something is like really pushing my stomach really bad, like pushing me back. If no one came in and was like, let's play mommy right here, right now, how would you feel about it? I want you to let out everything that you feel to me even saying that. I feel like not again. Okay, go further than that. I want you to go deeper than that. Okay, so not again. What makes you not want to? What's the energy behind not wanting to? What do you feel in your body? What kind of thoughts really answer the question why you don't want to play with him? I feel it's expected expected of me to know how to play and I don't I don't know how to play and I just get frustrated. What's the worst case scenario of Noah expecting you to know how to play and you not knowing how? What's he gonna do? What's the worst case scenario of that situation? Would laugh at me. Mm. Okay. And how do you feel when you're playing with him? I just hold back and I don't say anything and maybe he doesn't know this and he can just play by himself. So you feel frozen and like you don't know what to do? You're holding back and you don't know what to do. I just want him not to even notice that I'm there. What feels so scary about knowing what to do with playing a game? Everybody knows how to do that, but I don't. Define what knowing how to play a game looks like. What does it look like to know how to play a game? What is expected of you? What is a person who knows how to play a game? What are they doing that you're not doing? They are just doing it with ease and they are having fun. And I cannot have fun. I cannot have fun. I cannot have fun. You know, so this is about not being able to have fun. I'm, I'm always serious about it. And what kind of games did you used to play as a child? First thing that comes into my mind is just when, when I was like, seven or eight, I think. I was outside with the kids and I was, I was like building bricks out of mud to make a wall. Mm -hmm. I was so convinced that somebody will attack us. So I wanted to make a place to hide. Whose idea was it to build the brick wall, do you know? No, but I was so convinced somebody will come after us. So I had to be really serious about it to just make like a hole where we could all hide. So it wasn't really a game for you. You weren't having fun. So as this part, what I'm hearing is I can't even access the time that I made a game for fun. No. I want you to acknowledge in this moment right now with me that just because you can't access it doesn't mean there was never a time in your life where you didn't play for fun. I want you to acknowledge that as this part, it feels too much outside of your realm of understanding to access that. Can you acknowledge that with me? That it just feels too hard to access any time that that did happen? I feel I'm tense about it, that I don't even wanna, I don't even want to look into situations like that because I feel mm. the situation is so serious that needs all my focus on being really serious about it. Mm -hmm. 
and I think people don't understand how how serious it needs to be and by having fun. Who first made you feel like it had to be serious? What situation in your life made you feel like you couldn't have fun and fun was a very serious matter? Just the thought that I have that my, I think it was my dad that constantly told me to like quit the nonsense and I need to get real to be serious about things because like this, I, I cannot get anywhere with just fooling around. And how did you feel when dad said that to you? What, what did you think that he, that really meant? When he approached you in this way, what did you think he wanted from you? What did you think that he meant by it? What did you make it mean that he approached you and he said this? I I think I just got the conclusion that just having fun is stupid. Can you see that how you made having fun be this dangerous thing almost? How dad made it this dangerous thing? Yeah. What did fun mean to him? What did he really make it mean? Why was it bad? to him why was it a bad thing i don't know it's just something i remember so i don't connect it i don't know when it happened so i cannot connect to the emotion of when it happened okay, so what did he say exactly again uh, what did he tell you exactly again that you it's just this thing that i remember it's the thing that i he told me when i was you know like 20 something I don't remember when he said it the first time or he repeated okay um, and what did he say he said did he said uh, about my old boyfriend that the previous boyfriend that when I told him he's playing video games he said he should quit doing those nonsense and just do something like go work do do more money so we can have a better life so like you know like we never played game at home it was never a thing in our how how to to have fun or to 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 have a good time or to And what did you think dad wanted by going to work? Why did he value things like working and making money? Probably to have like an easier life. He felt that if you weren't working all the time and if you weren't always focused on making money, that you would have a harder time in life and that it was maybe dangerous even or not good or risky. Do you feel that he felt this way? I don't actually, I don't actually know what what he felt or what he thought. I want you to see how if dad is so afraid of fun, if he's so serious about life, that for him having fun meant that it was in opposition to making money and it was in opposition to working. And that meant that he was very, very nervous about working and making money, working out for him well. The fact that he was so serious about it means that he was actually really nervous about it happening for him. He was nervous about it happening for him and happening for you. I want you to see that. That if he was so, he was so serious about having fun and is so intensely focused on making money, and working it's because he feared that that wouldn't work out well for him and his family i feel that my my mom like how you describe the situation that 100 percent my mom as well because they had past experiences 
or making money was hard and finding work was hard, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So they were trying to protect you based off of these past experiences. So to, to them, fun feels like it's in opposition to making money and security. They feel like you can't have both, right? So let me ask you a question. If it was absolutely certain without a doubt that you could have both fun and making money and security at the same time, would it still be wrong with this mentality? Now I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying if you were in a world where that was the case, can you still find a problem that is wrong with making, having fun? I feel that the moment you say to have fun, I feel that I, I, I'm not safe. Mm -hmm. I feel like something is coming at me and I need to be attentive to that one. Mm. And okay. if, if I'm losing the focus from that one, by having fun, I might be kind of like attacked or, or I don't know, I feel like mm -hmm. something else takes me there. Mm -hmm. So I need to be really, really focused and attentive to that thing that's coming at me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think this is how I feel. It's either like if I play, I might be in danger. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the part of you in your body that feels this way? I feel my stomach. Like really, really fast. And is there a shape or a color associated with this? I think it's round and quite heavy. It's like, you know, kind of like a bowling, bowling wall. Mm -hmm. So I want you to acknowledge that this fear lives within you. This fear of fun that you associate with danger is living within you. Can you feel in your body what this danger feels like? If you were to give an identity to what this danger really felt and looked like that lives in your body, what would it, what would that identity be? I want you to find the place within your own body that is that danger. I feel like it's pain. Uh... What else can you tell me about this danger that lives within you? Just give an identity. If it looks like a person or an object or something more distinct, what would you assign it to? It feels, you know, like, like the center of an onion, you know, and all the leaves are just coming like that. You... Uh -huh. Okay, so I want you to feel this identity that is the danger that lives within you, okay? Now, what would happen if you would put it outside of your field for a second to speak to it? Can you do that? Can you ask it to leave your body and put it outside of your field so that we can speak with it? I feel like I like my like 
the rest of the body's like it's sticking to it like magnet, you know, and it cannot let it go. Mm. Does this mean that your acknowledgement of danger makes you feel protected? Does this mean that your strategy is to hold on to the danger to feel safe? I don't know how this is possible. It's okay. This, this is what's happening right now. Your fear of putting it outside of you shows me that you feel protected by keeping it close. It feels like I'm protecting the part. That fear. Okay. So it's my duty to, to keep it there. And does it feel more real to you that this part is the part of you that is in danger or the part of you that is danger itself? Because right now I'm not connected to the ball inside of me. I feel mm -hmm. I'm connected to, to like the energy that stays above it, that holds it there. Okay. And does that energy feel like it is the it is a part of you that is prone to danger or a part of you that is in danger? What feels more real? Is this a part of you that somehow is attracted to danger and is capable of creating it? Or is this a part that is danger within, in and of itself, that is dangerous? What feels more real to you? Does it feel like this part is going to be in trouble? No. Okay. Does it feel like this part is creating the danger, is responsible for it? It can be, because I feel it holds it there and doesn't want to let go. Okay. So Sandra wants to somehow control the situation. Okay. So, I want you to release yourself from this role and we're gonna go into that part and speak to it for a moment. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It feels like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. There's a lot of confusion here and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. It's okay. I've got you. We're, we're figuring this out together. Thank you. Okay. So releasing yourself of all roles you're currently playing, have ever played or will ever play. With your own free will, do you choose to become that identity we were speaking of on the inside? The, like you mean the ball? The one that felt like you didn't want to let go of it, that was associated with the identity of danger. Because I felt I was that energy when I was talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't you just take on the aspect that is the opposing part and we'll see what comes up. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I cannot connect it to anything whatsoever. So, you don't yeah. have to. Okay. You don't have to. We're going to let the universe decide what this is. We're going to let the universe show us what the opposing part is, okay? Yeah. Okay. So just release yourself to all expectations, all needing to know, and just be completely open to whatever part the opposing part is yeah. and whatever way that you can access that and it looks like. I'm just releasing yourself of all roles you are currently playing, have ever played or will ever play. And with your own free will, do you choose to become the opposing part? It feels like when the other party is around, it was so much pressure that I cannot even breathe. 
Oh, but the, it feels like so good to be myself right now because I can actually breathe like deeper. Mm. And I feel like lighter. Okay. I feel like yeah, this part is putting so much pressure constantly, like taking things so seriously that kept me like really tired and tense and everything. Mm -hmm. and, oh. It is a funny feeling that it's kind of like love hate relationship to that thing. Mm -hmm. Because I don't feel like this, I don't want that part to be close to me. I don't want to push it away. So I accept when it's close to me, but it's just so heavy. Can you see how that part is your internalized father? It's a protector part that is your internalized father. Can you see that? Oh, I feel the same about my dad. But it has yep. so many happiness. Like so yep. many happiness. I don't want people to go. But it's so much happiness. Mm -hmm. So much yeah. pressure, like so much coffee, like everything about pain and everything about. I don't want him to go. I don't want him to be. And how is it hard for you when this part is here, though? How is it affecting you negatively when this part is actually here? I feel I cannot express myself in any way. It's always out of pressure and always listening to what is saying to me and always, always, always the happiness. And there's no me here, it's like just the happiness all the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I really love my dad. I know you do. I know you do. I love him the most. I know. I know you do. And I know, I see the reason why I'm constantly listening that I'm not leaving because I love him. And I feel bad for him that he's like always unhappy. And I feel like it's like my duty to take care of him so I just stay here stuck in this situation and constantly like be there for him. Is this part, are you aware of how Anna Maria used to play as a child? Are you aware of times she had fun? Um, I don't, I, nothing comes to my mind about having fun. Okay. I think the only thing that comes to my mind is about feeling safe. And I, I kind of like feel I I feel like a like a lady that I don't even know that kind of like feels like she's so kind and she's really interesting in being there with me and gives me a lot of attention and a lot of care. And I, I kind of like feel safety. Okay. I don't feel, I don't feel fun anywhere. I don't see any fun anywhere. Okay. Okay. So this is your authentic truth from before dad made life so serious. Can you see that? That before life was this serious dangerous thing it was this thing where you got to feel safe at least yeah. 
How old are you is this part? Like uh, this part or the little girl? I think like here I'm like three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is your opinion of the opposing part, that danger? What do you think about that danger? What is that danger? Where does it come from? What is it? Why is this danger happening? What is the opposing part's relationship to this aspect of it that is danger? From this perspective, I perceive it like more like happiness and sadness. What do you want the other part to know? What do you want your opposing part to know about this situation? What wisdom can you give to this part? That I'm just here for it and I'm I'm not I'm not giving up on it. Okay. And from where you're standing, what strategy can you see that this opposing part has? What do you see about the strategy of this opposing part? What do you think it's trying to do? Are you aware? I think that part feels like safe with me somehow because I feel I'm containing that pain and I'm like all I do is just being there for that part. So what's your job in this situation? What is your strategy? What are you here for then? Just support the other part. Okay, so that's your purpose, is just to be whatever the other part needs you to be? I don't know if it's my purpose, but this is what I do. Okay. So can you become aware that you're the child aspect of Anna Maria? I didn't even read it here. I kind of like see my relationship with the part. And here, somehow I see like a bright situation mm -hmm. and like, like a lighter okay. aspect. But okay, I, so you're you're married to that part in a way. Is mean, that what you're saying? Yeah, to, to, to this part, to the other part, I'm... I'm uh, Okay, you said bright. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I heard you wrong. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I feel like this is me without having the this burden of taking care of the other part. Mm -hmm. Like the kind of like more open, more like yes. happy, like happier yes. and um, yes. lighter and not not with so much like not worrying so much but like just be and enjoy things. And are you aware that you share a body with this part, that you are this part as well, that you're an aspect of it? Are you conscious of that truth? You mean that this part, a part that I described, that is a part of me as well? Yes. Yeah, I think right now I'm from this part perspective, I I have a choice between taking care of the other part and just being free. But can you see that the other part is an aspect of you? That it shares a body with you? I want you to see that. It's living in the same body as you. It is you. <laughs> Because now it feels like it's that part and it's me. And me, I have like kind of like two aspects as well. 
so it feels like kind of like me like playing in between two roles and then it's the other part the opposite part mm -hmm. yeah because the the parts that were the part that we're speaking about is your internalized parents right yeah the first the first of the opposite part mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's still internalized. It's still a part of you. I want you to see that that even though it represents your parents and it represents people that are not you, this part of you that you've taken on is you. I want you to see that it shares the body with you and it's an aspect of you. Can you acknowledge that truth? That it's you. It's you. You're sharing a body with this part. You're two opposing parts of consciousness that are both within Anna Maria, the central identity, but it's one person. Can you acknowledge that truth? I, I, can, I can understand we are in the same part, but I mean in the same body, but kind of like I feel we are apart in that body. Okay. But you share a body, you can acknowledge that. Okay. All right. I want you to release yourself from this part. Okay, so coming back to your central identity, how do you feel about this session that we're in right now? How do you feel about the parts that you've both met? Is there anything that you want to say from your central identity that you can see? It feels that first like both the first part and the second part they are in, inside of that part it's kind of like two parts mm -hmm. and the same in this one it's like two parts mm -hmm. with the second one it was like she kind of knew the moment she put the attention on that bright side she kind of knew that she has options option of mm -hmm. carrying this burden mm -hmm. because she felt it gives her that love yeah. and on the other side it was the that somehow, how should I say, uh, like stress-free and worry-free. Which part? Like the, the, like the opposite part. This is yeah. why it, it, it's strange that it feels like she took the decision to, to like contain the other part Mm -hmm. but her true self but by, by by containing the like you would say the father the other part she would give up on her freedom mm -hmm. kind of deal and which which aspect were you saying felt stress-free uh the what was that about part, the the, the second the opposite part the one we were just in yes okay and she would feel feel stress free if she wasn't containing the first part. Is that the case? Yes. So if she didn't have to, if she just yeah. let go of that one, she would be stress free. But somehow she she chooses with her own free will, or I guess, to contain the other part. Mm -hmm. So what I feel is happening with these parts with this whole this uh alice in wonderland syndrome of both parts feel like they're more than one part yeah right yeah. so that whole alice in wonderland syndrome i think it's because 
in some way both parts have internalized a parent and so they're kind of feeling the aspect of them that was them before they took on what their parents felt does that make sense so it's kind of like both parts are carrying around this burden and what i feel is the first part that we were in is the internalized dad with the inner child and the second part is like this brightness and this carefree freedom and why she feels like she's two parts is because she's carrying around the opposing part so much does that make sense yeah so it's like she's having this sensation of being two parts because she's so enmeshed with the opposing part and she's carrying the burden of it yeah. the opposing part feels like it's two parts because it is an internalized parent so it is Anna Maria with an internalized parent. So this is Alice in Wonderland syndrome. This is why these parts are feeling this way. And this Alice in Wonderland syndrome comes up to kind of give us information about the parts and how they're feeling. Did you have this kind of situation before? Not exactly like this, no. It's a, it's a very unique one for sure. Because like in the second part, I had like more clarity of how I'm yes. taking care of the other part. But yes. the first part, there was a lot of confusion, eh? Yes. There was a lot of not being able to think and to have awareness and yeah. So I cannot figure out what the first part is like. I have no idea. So from your central identity, if you were to visualize what the first part looked like, what would you see? If you can visualize it like sitting in front of you to to the right side, what I want you to see it on the right side of your body outside of you. And I want you to visualize what it looks like. It feels like that one that I said, like, you know, that brown mm -hmm. uh, ball. And yeah. it's a person, like, thing like that on top of it. And then, like, I'm not letting you go. And I'm not letting mm -hmm. you do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, on, the, on the left side, I want you to visualize the part you were just in. What does that part look like? See it outside of you and turn to look to it on the left side. It feels like, you know, like a person that just holds mm -hmm. something, but like really caring so that's the difference that the other one is like really controlling and this one is kind of like caring like care caring caring yeah having a lot of care for the other part mm -hmm. yeah. i have no idea what's going on Ashen. that's okay that's okay we're working through it we're working through it all right so take a deep breath in and are you ready to go back into the first part? And just know that I've got the situation contained and I'm helping it go into the right direction. You don't have to do a thing. You just have to be these parts and be anything that you can think of or just try your best to answer my questions and that there's no pressure because I've got the situation contained, okay? So I, I know what I'm doing and I know which direction we're moving in, even when it feels confusing to you as these parts, okay? Okay, let's just go see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, releasing yourself of all roles you are currently playing, have ever played or will ever play, with your own free will, taking on the first part that we were in. Okay. So just trusting now that you're in this part, trusting that you're connected to it. 
As this part, are you aware of the conversation we just had with your opposing partner? Yeah. Okay. And how do you feel about what happened there? How do you feel about the conversation that happened there? So right now I feel I'm the person that's hold, holding the ball. And mm -hmm. I, and it's like my ball. I'm not mm -hmm. giving it away to the other person. And the other person like makes me mad, like the boss makes me mad because she's like falling into the, oh, I'm such a good girl. I'm taking care of you kind of shit. And how do you feel? That is my ball and he, like the other part should just leave it alone. Mm. Okay. Can you see how that's how your parents felt about Anna Maria as a child? I feel she was trying to maybe take care of them and take on this ball and they were like, no, just leave me alone. We don't need you to do this for us. Can you see that? Yeah, she was always trying to help. She was always trying to help and she was always rejected, but she kept trying and trying and trying. Mm -hmm. mm. So the supposing part that we're in, she's the same part that feels rejected when Noah doesn't want to play with her. Is that the case? Can you say that again? The part the little girl that we were just in, the opposing part, she's the same part that feels rejected when Noah doesn't want to play with her. Can you see that? That she's the little girl that feels rejected when Noah doesn't want to play with her? It's okay. You don't have to say anything. Just try to just try to allow that awareness to hit you. Okay. So one thing I'm really noticing about you is it's very hard for you to speak. It's very hard for you to form understanding or thoughts of your own. You get very confused when I try to help you have awareness of yourself in the other part, right? You get very frozen and so why do you think that is? I know I feel frustrated. Uh-huh. Okay, so is that what's happening when I'm asking you questions and you're not answering? You're feeling frustrated about the, the question? Okay, so you're feeling frustrated. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm so frustrated, but before I was like just holding to that ball and now I'm like frustrated. Mm -hmm. But I'm not letting the ball go, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting it go. And I'm angry because of having the conversation with the other part, because before that we didn't have this situation. Mm. What, what was your perception of before? How was it better before? What was different about before? Somehow I felt like a magnet 
to the ball before, but now I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I feel. I don't know. Do I feel confused? I don't So your strategy is to protect yourself by not having fun, by focusing on danger and being very serious, right? This is how you protect yourself? I don't perceive anything as fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see that that's a strategy to protect yourself? that you're choosing to not perceive anything as fun, that you're choosing to not like fun as a strategy to protect yourself. This is how you stay safe. Can you acknowledge that? I, I just feel like fun is like pointless and stupid. Mm -hmm. And this is a strategy to stay safe. You were taught to feel that way by dad, and it was a strategy to stay safe. And you feel that fun is stupid and pointless because it feels like it's in opposition to making money and being taken care of, right? To working and making money and taking care of. It feels like it's in opposition. It's one or the other. I'm either going to be having fun or I'm going to be safe and having money. There are so many things to take care of, like, like, I really find it really pointless to have fun. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's too much things that you have to focus on to make money and to stay safe and to keep out of danger, right? There's just, there's too much to focus on in life that's serious, that there's no time for fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I cannot have fun because then I'm just losing focus on what I need to do and then I'm like, fuck, if I do that. Hmm. Just like, like this life is standing on me on doing the serious stuff. Okay. I, I feel like I have to do everything here. And if I don't do whatever I need to do, everything falls apart. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You're so, under a lot of pressure. Okay. Yeah, so I just need to get things done. Mm -hmm. And this is like, kind of like, it's me that has to do that. And mm -hmm. Or, or no. I don't even see like support in the picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it possible that things feel this way to you, that things feel so serious and, and dangerous to you and it feels like there's all this pressure on your shoulders? Is it possible that it feels this way because of experience? But this has been your experience in life. This has been your dad's experience in life. How do you know it's that way? Because of experience, right? Yeah. Okay, so what if there was something outside this experience that you've been having? Is it possible that there's something that exists outside of this experience that you've had. Can you know for certain that this experience you've been having, that dad's been having is the only truth? 
Can you be absolutely certain that it's the only truth that exists in this world? Just I yes or no? Look. I don't dare to look. Okay, but can you just acknowledge that it's possible that it might not be the only experience? I want you to see that you don't have to look, you don't have to go there, you don't have to drop anything to acknowledge that it's possible that there's another experience outside of the experience you're having, it doesn't mean that you're changing anything. It doesn't mean that you're stopping what you're doing. It doesn't mean that you're not aware of the things that you're aware of currently from your current perspective. You're just acknowledging that maybe there's an experience outside of the one that I'm having. I feel that even this conversation is just losing losing my time and I need to focus on what I need to focus. I'm like so under pressure to do the things that I don't dare to look at other possibilities because what if it fails? What if that doesn't work for me? And who is doing the things that I need to do? Because there's nobody here to help me do the things that I need to do. I'm just by myself doing the thing. Okay, so let me give you an example here for a second. Yeah, I feel I'm getting in, in trouble if I don't do whatever I need to do and finish whatever I need to finish and do it the way that it's supposed to be. Okay, let me give you an example for a second on why this conversation might be of service to you, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's say that you're carrying a hundred straws, okay? Yeah. And it's your responsibility to make sure all these straws are being held in the air so they don't fall down. And yeah. that represents the seriousness of everything you need to focus on, okay? I really hope they don't fall. <laughs> what if I came and I helped you carry them? Can you see how that's less pressure? Can yeah. you see how that feels safer, like someone's helping you? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now, is I'm helping you carry the straws. I'm helping you figure out what's going on with the straws that you're carrying. That's why it serves you to be in this conversation. I'm trying to make it easier for you to work with the fact that you're stressed and that you're focused on all these things trying to help you carry the straws, okay? Does that feel better that we're having this conversation? I, I feel better when you said that you can help me carry the straws. <laughs> Sorry, what? I didn't understand that. <laughs> I felt happy that you're helping me carry the, <laughs> carry the straws. Good, good, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm so glad that you feel that. I'm so stressed. I will like be with fall on the floor, and I will have no idea how to what to do to take care of the straws. And look, I cannot go and take care of the other parts, like those straws that are falling on the floor, while I need to carry those straws. So everything I'm here that to I need help to you. Do, everything that I need to do is like my life mission. If I don't do it, I will just die. Uh huh. I understand that, but I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you now. Okay? You don't have to carry the straws by yourself anymore. You're not alone in this anymore. I can see that you've been carrying them, and I can see how stressful it is for you, and I can see what a big deal it is for you, and it's your safety, and I'm here to help you with that. Okay? Just take that in for a moment. This is your new reality, is somebody is here to help you with that. Somebody is here to be with you in this reality. I feel so less pressure right now. Yeah, of course. Of course, because before it felt like I was in opposition to you, and now you can see that I'm on your team. Right? Yeah, it's, it's because I'm so curious on what I need to do that I 
I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot allow it to be distracted because then I cannot finish what I need to do. But if you say okay. that the human help me, then I can relax a bit. Okay. So why don't you talk to me more about what your job is? What are you focused on doing? I have like a lot of chores that I need to do and it looks like a line, you know, that's never ending. So my focus in, is in just doing that and do it properly and do it on time and do that and that and that and that and that and that and that. And this is why I feel it's so stupid and losing my time to, to have fun. It's like just, I cannot, I, I no, I, I, I cannot do that. I can see how that would be ridiculous to you, that you feel that you're in this, your experience is that you're in this never-ending thing of having to do chores and having to do this and having to do that. And so having fun, I can see how that would feel really pointless and really s stupid. I can see that. But, uh, And it's not, it, it feels like not even, not, not only like stupid, but that it's like a threat for me. Yeah. Because that one just, if that happens, then it means that it, it risks the situation a lot. It's a lot of risk that I will not be able to perform the things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand. So what why do you think that these this never ending list of tasks that you have to do, why are they important? Why do they matter? It's because they come from my parents that constantly put pressure on me that I need to do everything and I need to do it properly and I mm -hmm. It's constantly pressure, 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 pressure. And what happens? What's the worst case scenario that happens if you don't do it the way they're asking you to do it? What what happens then? I feel like my mom would scream at me. What's the worst case scenario? If she screams at you, okay? What's the worst case scenario of that? What is so bad about that? What's really going to happen? I cannot handle to have her constantly screaming at me. Okay, why though? What's the worst case scenario of her screaming? What is so bad for you about it? What do you think is going to happen? Your parents are going to stop loving you. What's going to happen? I feel like you're going to. Yeah. I feel she, she cannot stop like demanding to do things. She cannot stop. She's like constantly giving me things to do. And then she's not happy. And then she keeps screaming and screaming. And it's like, oh, what? I don't even know what's worse to just stay all day to hear her scream or to be under pressure to just do the things on time and do it properly. Mm -hmm. It's like really hurting me when she's constantly making me feel like useless and doing things that, that I, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Now I have a question for you. Which part of you feels responsible for feeling like you need to play with Noah? 
Is it the opposing part or is it you? Which one of you feels like, oh God, I've got to play with him kind of thing? I don't feel I have anything to do with Noah. I don't even know what, who Noah is. Okay. Can you become aware of the fact that Anna Maria has a son named Noah now? Can you become aware of your central identity and who Noah is? He's the little... I feel like such a small part of her, like such a small part of her, like a really tiny one. And when I look, you know, like from outside, it feels like it's ridiculous that I have to do all this work when I'm so tiny and all that work doesn't mean anything to her. I just think that when I'm in my head, it feels like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. But when I look from outside, she's like, I'm so tiny there that it's even what I'm doing, it doesn't even matter the whole picture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i understand that because your parents were constantly putting pressure on you that you felt like you couldn't keep up with yeah yeah and what was really hard for you about that is that they were putting the pressure of an adult onto you can you see that the, the pressure of what an adult they were putting the pressure of an adult onto you yeah I don't know. I don't know. But it, it made me. I, I don't even know how it made. And that me. didn't work. That that literally didn't work. They were putting so much pressure onto you that it literally didn't work because you're not an adult. You're a little kid. And the only thing that you could do to cope with the situation was to try to hold all of the straws. To struggle to hold all the straws to struggle to do all the tasks and to struggle to keep up with what they were throwing at you so that they wouldn't yell, right? Yeah. So even though it wasn't possible for you to do everything that they wanted of you, just by struggling with it and trying, that kept them from yelling at you, right? I don't want to feel useless. Are you really useless if your parents are putting a responsibility onto you that you're not capable of doing? They say I cannot do anything properly. Okay, but I need you to see that they're putting a responsibility onto you that is not supposed to be yours in the first place. I want you to see that they're putting responsibilities of an adult onto you. And that's not possible for a little child to deal with. I want you to think of another little girl for a second. Can you imagine a three-year-old girl for me, with me for a second? That's not you? Yeah. Okay, so if I go up to that little girl and I tell her to be an adult and to take on the responsibility of the adult, is she capable of doing that? To do that. Yeah, she's not capable, right? No. Okay. So they were telling you to do things that you were not capable of doing. They were telling you to take on the responsibility of an adult, and you were not capable of doing that at three years old. It was not possible for you to take on what they wanted you to take on. Can we start by acknowledging that? I think my mom, she couldn't handle how much work she had to do, so she, she wanted me not to stay in her way. But she mm -hmm. to do things properly, so, I, so she doesn't need to work for me as well. Mm -hmm. I feel I do this with Noah sometimes, that I have so many things to do, and I don't want him to stay in my way. Mm -hmm. 
I understand. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, no, I feel that when he asks for to play, he just stays in my way of not finishing what I need to finish. Mm -hmm. But the chores are never ending, like never ending, never ending, and I, 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 it's not even on my way there to just play with him because I cannot. I cannot, I just need to finish what I need to finish. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's like so much pressure that it's like stuff everywhere and issues. So, is it possible that playing with Noah feels like a job to you? Yeah. And I don't have okay. time for that. I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. So, it feels like a job that is stupid that you don't have time for. Yeah. Just another thing that he's putting onto your plate that you just don't have time for. Yeah. Okay. And even if I have the time, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. No. What? Is it possible that your parents were making you feel like you had to do things that you didn't have to do? They were telling you that you had to do things. They were telling you you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to have this pressure. Can you see that they decided? that you had to do these things. They decided they were important. They decided they were a non-negotiable. They decided that you wouldn't be okay if you didn't do them. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So how do we, how do we know that they were actually important to your life or not? Can you see that they told you that these things were important to your life out of fear? Can you see that doing all these things was the strategy of keeping you in fear to stay out of danger? I want you to see that giving you all these tasks and making you do all these things they weren't necessarily the most important things that you actually had to be doing in life. They were just what mom and dad thought you had to be doing because they were afraid. Can you see that? Can you see that mom and dad thought that you had to be doing all these things and they thought they had to be doing all these things out of fear? They were afraid. They were afraid that life was not going to work for them. They were afraid that life was going to be dangerous. They were afraid that if they weren't serious all the time and doing everything, that life would destroy them. And they wouldn't be okay. Can you see that? It can be because my mom, she's like constantly working, 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 going to work coming home, working, 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 all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to do the same, like work, 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 do that. I was like cleaning that freaking carpet, like to just do it perfect. So I, oh, I can see it, I'm happy. At, like things one time mm -hmm. and they were still not happy because mm -hmm. I now let me ask you a question for a second here let me ask you a question for a second here yeah. what is a better strategy somebody who is working and just doing everything and constantly working and constantly constantly doing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing or somebody who is working smart Somebody who is really establishing what the right things to do are that are going to really help them in life. Like if there's all these things, right? If there's this endless list of things you could be doing, right? Who, who is going to do it better? Who is going to be doing better in life? The person who is doing just every single thing that's handed to them and just never stopping to do those things or the person that is prioritizing the things that feel like they're gonna have the best impact on their life. Who's smarter? 
who do you want to be? Do you want to be the person that is just doing everything that they can possibly think of that's being thrown at them? Or do you want to be the person who's going to prioritize what's really going to matter and make a difference in their life? You're still doing things, but you're prioritizing what's most important. I feel that if I choose the road of my mom, I will constantly be in pressure, under pressure, pressure, pressure. I think that this pressure will just kill me at one point because it's like never ending story. It, it doesn't have an end, ever. Okay, so what about if you became the person who prioritized what was really important? What if you take, took a look at the things that were there to do in your life and prioritized what really mattered the most, what was going to make the biggest impact on your life, what was going to add to your life the most by doing it? Which sounds better to you? Something appealing at the second option, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I feel I don't even have a life. I, I want I you to see this life. for a second. I understand. I understand. I want you to see this for a second. You're holding all of these straws, right? Yeah. And each of these straws represents a task that mom and dad have put onto your shoulders, right? Yeah. So. What if these tasks that they put onto your shoulders, what if they were there because they were trying to make it so that you would have the best life possible? What if they put them onto you because they thought that they would serve you if you took them on? Is that possible? Yeah. Okay, so then there, they're there because they're, they represent a possibility of something that if you did it, it would help you in your life, right? Yeah. But then it's, it's your choice to complete that thing or to do that thing, right? You get to decide and it's supposed to be there for your life. It's supposed to be there to serve your life, right? I don't feel I'm, I'm, I'm doing them for me. I don't, I don't know where I am in this picture. Okay, but I want you to see that even though it didn't feel like you were doing it for you, that mom and dad thought that you were. Yeah, they, they really thought so. Yes. Okay, so you're holding these straws because mom and dad think it's in your best interest to hold them, right? Yeah. And they think it's in their best interest to hold them and that it's going to serve you in your life, right? Yeah. So what if you made it your job, instead of holding all of these straws all the time and trying to just complete all of them in any random order, what if you started to figure out what would actually help you in your life? What if you started to prioritize what actually made a difference, what actually mattered to you? I think the pile would not be that big. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. Can you see that with your own free will, you get to do that now, that you're not a child anymore? And that what mom and dad thinks is, think is best for you is not a reality anymore. You don't have to listen to them anymore. You don't have to just do everything they tell you to do because they're not always right. They're not always the smartest people. They didn't always know what was best, actually. What if holding all of these straws that mom and dad put onto you is actually stupid? What if that's what's actually stupid? What if it doesn't serve you in your life and they don't know what they're talking about? What if you get to choose with your own free will to be smarter than them by actually prioritizing what straws matter and don't matter? What if you get to be smarter than them? What if you don't have to just follow what they think anymore because you're actually an adult now and you get to be smarter than them? 
instead of just doing all of these things that don't matter, that don't feel like they matter, you can decide to actually be smart now and work smart now and prioritize what actually matters. Now you can make the pile smaller by figuring out what is actually going to matter to your life, what's actually going to make an impact, and just prioritize that instead of just doing everything that mom and dad tell you. I want you to become aware that you're an adult now, and mom and dad are not under controlling you anymore, and they're not sitting there yelling at you anymore. You have internalized them, and you've started yelling at yourself. But now you get to be the one that decides. You're an adult now and you're in charge of your own life and you get to decide. So you get to decide to put the straws down that don't make sense. You get to choose that now. Can you see that? How do I know which straws to put down? You're going to prioritize them. You're going to look at each straw. And you're going to feel like, do I really need to carry this? How is this going to really impact my life positively or negatively? You get to just feel into it and make a decision. And what you can do is you can ask the part of Anna Maria that knows what's going to help her and not help her. You can ask that part to help you out with this. Can you tune into the part of you? Can you feel the part of you right now that is capable of knowing what serves her and doesn't serve her in her life? Wow. <laughs> I never met her. <laughs> okay, you're meeting her now, though. I want you to allow her into your reality now. She's going to be responsible for telling you which straw to put down and which straw to take on. And she's going to prioritize it based on what's going to actually serve you in your life and help you in life and make life better for you and make life to work for you better. And what doesn't? I feel that I'm so good at listening to what others are telling me to do. So, okay, so I you're going to start listening to her. You're going to start listening to the part of you that knows what works and what doesn't work, what matters and what doesn't matter. A part of you that is capable of prioritizing things instead of just doing everything. That would make my life so easy. <laughs> uh, okay. So she's the new person that you, you want to be listening to. Because I'm just listening to everybody, but just the idea that I have a part of that that actually in Ana Maria in the same body with me that actually knows that's a really new idea to me that yeah not only does she know but she wants things that are in your best interest she actually cares about the things that are really going to help you in life that are really in your best interest and she knows what they are and you get to listen to her from now on Can you feel her holding you and giving you a big hug and working with you? You don't have to listen to anyone else ever again. You get to take responsibility over your own life now with the part of you that is capable of doing that. And this includes that if no one wants you to play with him, you can just tell him no. You don't have to play with him unless you want to. Yeah. 
it's okay if you don't want to play with Noah. It's okay to say no. It's okay if you don't know how to play, and it's okay if you don't want to play. That's okay. You don't have to. Can you see how it, when Noah asks you to play, it feels like mom and dad trying to force you to do something that you didn't know how to do? You don't have to listen to him. He's your kid. You provide him with everything. You do everything for him already. You really don't have to play with him. If you want, Miguel can be the one to play with him sometimes. You don't have to play with him. He's not the boss of you. He doesn't get to decide what you do or not do. And yeah, sure, he wants you to play with him. You don't have to, though. Fun should be something that you're ready for. And it's okay if you're not ready for it. It's okay if you don't want to. And it's okay if what Noah is asking you to do just doesn't feel fun. You need to start by realizing that you've never experienced fun before. You've never been allowed to experience fun before. You've never been allowed to see it as important. So your job is to start by just figuring out what the fuck fun is. What is fun? What is fun for you personally? What, what do you want to consider fun and not? Do you want to have fun or not have fun? That's your free will. You get to decide. Noah is not the boss of you. You do not have to listen to him. If he wants you to play, and if he feels upset that you don't play or whatever, I want you to see that you're still his mom. I want you to see that there are no consequences for saying, Noah, I don't want to play with you. Yeah, sure, he wants you to play with him. But if you say no, and if you make a boundary about it, you're not going to be any less his mom. You're not going to be any less loved by him. He still relies on you. He relies on you for his survival. He relies on you to be his connection. I feel like you, he will not love me anymore if I don't play with him. Well, here's the thing about that. Is that I want you to see that he relies on you loving him as much as you rely on him loving you. If not more. It wouldn't be in his best interest to stop loving you because he would be screwed. You're his mom. Oh, but I really, I don't feel that empowerment, you know, that I'm empowered. I, I really feel like that, that he's my boss. And I feel okay, like- I want you to see this though. I, I understand. I understand how you feel, but I want you to see this with me. Noah is your child. He's your kid. And I want you to see, I, I want you to see something with me for a second, okay? Just stay with me. If you stopped loving Noah, he would be screwed. If he lost your love, he would have basically no one else and he would be totally screwed. You literally, you grew this little boy in your womb. You grew him in your body. His brain and his heart and his organs and his circulatory system, that all got created and grown inside of your womb. And you are the one that is responsible for him being alive or dead. So if you stop loving him, or if he stops having this connection of love with you, he's totally screwed. I want you to see that. I think that what I need to realize here is that because with him, I feel I'm still that little girl and he has yeah. power over me. I don't feel like that part like that mm -hmm. child. Like it's, so it's, it's a grown up. I just feel it's, it's a child that needs to obey to know the way I obey to my parents. And I don't know how to, to, like... Okay, but 
here's the thing is your new job is to obey the part of Anna Maria that is going to take responsibility for her life. We already established that the boss of you is the part of Anna Maria that knows how to prioritize and knows what's in your best interest. That's who's the boss of you. It's not Noah. Can you see that you've changed bosses? <laughs> I don't need to obey yes I don't need your to. only job is to obey the part of Anna Maria who knows how to prioritize and knows what's in your best interest she's the new boss she's the adult and she's the new boss okay and it's very important that you listen to her okay so I need to just let her decide if I will play with Noah or not yes she's gonna be the one who decides she's the one in charge of you Okay. Yeah. Uh, it it's really it feels so comforting to to have the other part actually like taking care of me because I never felt this one. I never felt that anything I need to do it's because somebody cares about me. Yeah. It's the first time I feel that. Somebody's actually there for me. Yes. You can let that in. You can let that impact you. It was always me doing things for somebody else because somebody else had me like, I feel like everybody, everybody around me, they're my bosses and I just need to obey to everybody around me. And nobody cares about my best interest, nobody, and I just need to obey. From now on, that's not your reality anymore. You're no longer a little girl that is obeying everybody else. You're no longer the little girl that has to obey people that don't care about your best interest. From now on, you obey the aspect of Anna Maria that is the adult, that does care about you and does know what your best interest is. She's the new adult in town, and she's the only one you have to listen to from now on. Got it? You don't have to listen to anyone else, okay? I want you to get this. You don't have to listen to anyone else. Nobody else gets a say in your life anymore, only her. She's the adult that you are going to listen to from now on. And she just she's cares the about adult. me being good. And she just cares about me being good. To be, to be like, safe and to be like yes yes she only cares what's in your best interest what's really going to make a difference in your life what's really important she's the new adult in town she's going to take care of you from now on you're the she's the only one that you have to listen to now okay and she really genuinely cares about you because guess what what's in your best interest is in her best interest It feels like I do not have to do it. You know, I do not have to do anything more but just be taken care of. So now I want you to just release yourself from this role. This is the resolution that you needed. You can release yourself from this role now. 